This is just a picture how this could happen. Of course, your corporate strategy would emerge first. During implementation, you would then formulate your other strategies, evaluate the strategies, and do the feedback into the corporate strategy evaluation to adjust as necessary. And at a glance, I've tried to summarize it based on Sam Houston University. Uh, from the inspirational part, the vision, the mission, the values, uh, they say you should actually then do an audit and see where you stand, how far you are from what, where you want to be, then devise your strategies, right? So we have the strategy formulation in the, the third and the fourth block from the top, uh, the implementation in the two blocks below that, and then the strategy evaluation, of course, on a, almost on an ongoing basis, measuring, evaluating your performance, all of that feeding back, right, perhaps even all the way to the vision mission strategy, like the example I've just given. Right. So the planned part is what we call the deliberate strategy. The feedback part with external factors, internal factors would then be called uh, the emergent strategy. So we thought this picture was actually a nice graphic representation of that theory. Just to look a little bit more in detail, the formulation part of things is just writing down long-range plans and this is our planned or deliberate strategy, as I've already mentioned. Uh, the main inputs, according to SHSU, the vision, mission, values, of course, but also we need to look at our strengths, weaknesses internally, right, and the opportunities and threats which are normally externally. Now, strength, weakness, opportunities, threats, that is a SWOT analysis. We all know SWOT analysis, it's a risk management tool and it's a tool that's normally used very high level, very, very early on at conceptual stages or therefore at strategic levels. So according to Sam Houston University, this is what makes the melting pot out of which your strategy should emerge or at least the strategy formulation should emerge at the bottom. This is a Sukkot view, this is a slide that you will recognize, it's probably in the front cover of our, our folder, our marketing folder and so on. Strategic alignment um, is it's one of the main messages that we preach. Right? You cannot start doing something at the bottom if it has no strategic guidance, strategic direction, or if it is not aligned with your strategies. Right? So it is normal, everybody says yes, of course, uh, is there even another way? But yet, if you look at organizations, it's frightening how many projects, for instance, are launched at middle management level that are actually not in line with organizational strategy. They are there just to benefit a department head or to benefit a GM somewhere or something like that. Right? So it is important we keep strategic alignment in organizations as much as possible. Right? And strategy we may only think of it as coming from the top down, it's just as much from the bottom up, right? Because the benefits of all our initiatives will need to be rolled up towards the top for the sake of the organization. Already we're hinting at the, sorry, we're hinting at some of the preferred tools. Is it going? Uh, for strategy implementation, uh, we talk of the three P's generally, project management, program management, portfolio management. Now, whether portfolio sits above programs or sideways of the program uh, is open to debate. We admit that. Uh, in my personal opinion, a portfolio is much more an accounting concept. You know, it's grouping projects that may not have anything to do with each other, but just for, for management, resource, financial management, and so on. Whereas a program of projects uh, and other work is much more... Um, a grouping of, of linked initiatives right, aimed at meeting mostly strategic goals in the organization. Right. But we don't want to make this into a program management course, uh, so we leave it there. We'll come back to the concept. Right, does anybody know, is the battery going down or is it okay? Right, a word or two about strategy implementation, and we're still doing okay on time. Uh, obviously, putting the strategies and the policies into action, right? In their words, through programs, budgets, and procedures, <coughs> right? The programs including projects. Now, interestingly, and this is an addition on my part, 
is that strategy implementation requires organic thinking, systems thinking, right? Organizations, if you look at, at brochures or websites of organizations, and they still show the organization as a pyramid structure, a rigid structure, whatever shape it takes, it's actually not very realistic anymore. These days, we started to use spaghetti structures. You've heard of those for organizations because there are so many communication lines, reporting lines, or uh, fields of authority. On one project, you are a team member. On another project, you are a sponsor. On another project, you're a project manager. Uh, you may have a role in, in a line, in a production line somewhere, uh, reporting to a line manager. You, know, you may have many, many different hats in organizations these days. That's just the way it works, right? It's, uh, I don't think anybody here comes to his desk in the morning, the entry is full, the artery, okay, the inbox, the art box, computer, and you go through your mails and you answer the mails and that's your day's work. I don't think nobody has the luxury of doing that. There's always other things that come out. You have to do something for this project, or you have to do something for another line manager, and so on, and so on. Right. Okay, so organic thinking, what do we mean by that? <clears throat> we need to see our organization whether that's a commercial company, whether that's a government organization, whether it's a non-profit organization, it doesn't matter. We need to see the totality of our organization. Having spent most of my life in projects, I'm fairly used to getting comments, sometimes facetiously, from operational people. Yeah, we make the money. You project managers, all you do, you spend our money. What for? Yeah, spending money, it's easy. We make the money, yes? Mr. Operations Manager, Mr. Production Manager, we spend money. You know why? So you and your operation department can still make money two, three years down the line. We have to do these things now. We are helping the company changing, whatever change that may be, right? So that we may stay in business or that we may grow in our business. We may create new opportunities. We may create new production facilities, new software uh, programs, new tools, whatever the case may be. Whatever it is that we need to stay agile in our business, to keep an edge in the business, Darwin, to survive. Right. It is also proven that companies who change faster, in other words, you implement projects faster, grow faster. You grow faster, you tend to yield better return. You yield better return on the stock market. If you're a public organization, you get more investors. You get more investors, you can do more projects. It's a vicious circle. And especially in times of economic downturn, it's the companies who are stifled, the dinosaurs, who don't move fast, dinosaurs don't move fast, right? They tend to fall by the wayside in terms of difficulty. Think about it. If you go back to 2008 and you start reading some newspapers, uh, you'll see. You'll see what I mean. It's the agile companies that survive. Now, I have a... Our, our live encyclopedia in the office sitting next to me, but don't answer this one. Does anybody know which species, by the way, is probably lived the longest in its unchanged form on Earth? Or one of them. I'm not saying it's the best. Pardon? Uh, possibly, yes. Insects and you know, the, the, the mono, mono cell and those, those things. But apart from those... Rats, probably strong at survival. Crocodiles, alligators have been around for 80 million years in fairly unchanged form. They may have shrunk a little bit. Uh, but still in Africa, you, you get 900 kilogram crocodiles which you don't want to meet in the water. On land, you can outrun them sometimes, but uh, not in the water. Right. Anyway, so you may, you may wonder, and this is not a biology class, but you may wonder what actually makes them so efficient. Right, and uh, I remember watching a program, I don't know if it was National Geographic or something, where they showed that crocodiles who are actually very indi individualistic animals, help each other out when somebody catches a big prey and they can't, they can't pull it apart or whatever, and they all come and help and they twist and turn until everybody has their bite. And then they just they move away again. Uh, very simple things like that, but yet one of the longest surviving species on Earth. Back to business. If we have corporate strategy, corporate vision, which is good, which is inspiring, we need to implement it. And a lot of companies have good strategies, but very few companies manage to implement these strategies effectively and efficiently. You can go straight to operations. You can tell your line managers, we have a strategy, we want to implement this. The line manager will say, yeah, 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 tomorrow. 
all right, because I have a busy schedule. I have to make sure my plant, we have an outage day and we have maintenance to do there, and I have to meet performance targets, production targets, and so on. I'll worry about your strategy later, Mr. Mr. CEO. Right. We need projects, we need programs with dedicated people, preferably if you can afford it, to implement those changes. You need to work together with operations. Right. Operational divisions make our money today. They are not geared, they are not focused, they are not tailored to implement change. Projects need to do that. Projects and programs. We need to have dedicated people. We need PMO right, um, to go and do that for us. So our business change where the project delivers a product or service, whatever that is, right, needs to be used by operations. And operations cannot do that unless projects implement it for them. So business change, business as usual, go together and need to meet our strategic goals of perhaps growth, of perhaps becoming the biggest car manufacturer in the world, as our next example will illustrate. 